Hey guys, how's it going? Lupine here. Just wanted to bring you another quick video on how to dodge the Rikard Lava Quake, aka probably the single most effed up attack in the game that I can personally think of. I've struggled a lot personally trying to figure out how to dodge this and how I'm supposed to dodge it, what was intended and what wasn't. So I decided to just spend an hour just kind of messing around testing it just to see what I could come up with. I didn't really go in and use like a hitbox viewer or like mess with the frame data or anything like that. But yeah, this attack was such a struggle for me to learn. I had such a hard time trying to dodge it. It just felt really inconsistent, but I think I've more or less figured it out now. And I will mention that any sort of footage you see with me wearing a full armor set is on medium roll. And anytime you see me being a naked skelly man, that is with light roll. So like maybe, but the problem is I don't think you can roll it out the side if you're right beside him. We could try. I honestly really do. I know like it's kind of lame that we're stuck on right card. But I really do want to find a way to just be consistent and dodge that. Because honestly, this is the single most fucked up attack in the game. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. I really want to try fucking getting up there. Yo, let's go! Confirmed! So that was me seven months ago, still wondering how I'm supposed to dodge this attack for my challenge run. For the run, what I ended up actually doing was experimenting a bit and I found that you could just jump off of the corpse piles. So that's what I ended up doing for that run and that's how I hit list Rikard. I even did two of it in a row on the actual run. Now, while this does look cool and is flashy, it is far from perfect. I'm dead, bros. Oh, we're good. What a fucking joke. So today I wanted to find a better solution to dodge this attack and try to learn more about how this attack actually works. So first up, before we talk about vanilla, roll dodges, that kind of stuff, let's talk about Ashes of War. Because you can do a lot of interesting things in this game with Ashes of War, such as jumping over boss attacks or even using things like Lightning Ram to roll underneath stuff in low profile. First up, we got the classic Vow of the Indomitable. This shit is so good. No surprise here, honestly, that this works. I fully expected it to. It is super good. Surprisingly, though, even Bloodhound Step struggled against dodging this attack. There isn't enough iframe for you to actually Bloodhound Step through this attack on the current patch. Maybe pre-nerf Bloodhound Step would have been able to, but I still doubt it. But eventually, I was able to find a way to get out of the way with it. You can use it to dodge out of the way to the side of the cone, although this is still pretty tight when you're close up to him. Even just regular quick step works just fine as well, although it's a little bit trickier. Next, I was a little bit sad that the traditional Ashes of War that you can use to jump over things don't actually get you high enough to get over the wave, despite you hyper armoring through them. While I wasn't really expecting things like Wolf Assault, Storm Assault, or Butt Slam to get you high enough to clear the Lava Quake, I was kind of hoping that the Black Blade or Blade of Calling weapon art would get you over it. But alas, it doesn't seem like it works. These are kind of helpful if you want to do my Corpse Pile strategy, as it's still pretty hard to do, so having an Ash of War that keeps you airborne for longer, or like something like a Dragon Spell would really help out here. So you can use it for that. I was pleasantly surprised, however, to find out that Raptor of the Mist easily dodges this. It is very clean, and I have not taken an iota of damage using this Ash of War against this boss. It's a shame you can't switch the Ashes of War on the Serpent Hunter, although that would probably be the best weapon they've ever made at that point if you could. But regardless, you still have plenty of time to swap out your weapons and two-end other stuff once you see the startup animation, so it's not really a huge deal. And Bloodhound's finesse failed miserably, although I did also want to try the bloody heal aside frames. I didn't have it on this character and I was just way too lazy to go and get it, so if you do know if it works, just let me know in the comments. And of course, you could always just face tank it with Endure and not get burger flips, so that's always nice. You get a bunch of resistances, plus you can always stack it with things like the Flame Drake Talisman plus two, and also some better fire resistant armor like the Lionel set, and really just optimize your fire resistance here. I'm sure you could probably use a buff like Flame Grant Me Strength, or probably one of those gives you fire resistance. I don't know, I'm not really a mage player, if you really wanted to go ham. So yeah, that's like an option. In this specific case, it's really not giving you an opportunity to counterattack the boss by enduring the attack, so it's whatever. 
Next, I wanted to test the effectiveness of blocking since that's the simplest solution to this. And yep, it works pretty damn good. I just picked a random medium shield that had good fire resistance and I was blocking a good amount of damage and not getting burger flipped. The nice thing too is you could always stack barricade onto that and even if you're creative you can fire infuse the shield as well as stack it with other things that we previously talked about like flame drake talisman plus two and fire resistant armor and all that jazz some of the footage interspersed here has different amounts of flame resistance on this character but you might not be wanting to use a shield since you are supposed to use the serpent hunter for this fight and that might be too heavy of a loadout for you here is me on my rune level one naked unupgraded weapons challenge run with a bunch of other restrictions but we're not going to get worked up about it blocking the lob of a quake with an unupgraded serpent hunter while naked and not dying mainly because i'm wearing ritual shield talisman but you know still that's pretty impressive i'd say so blocking is perfectly fine but as for other creative solutions let's take a trip to the potion cellar first off with the wondrous mixed physique you can just throw in both the opaline bubble tier and opaline hard tier i believe for a bunch of damage negation and just pop it whenever he casts it if you're using the serpent hunter there's a good chance you're going to burn through phase one really quickly and you might only see the lava quake once if at all especially if you stay close so this is a good option to get that damage negation and just tank the attack this also works for uplifting aromatic which gives you a nice damage buff afterwards And the Iron Jar Aromatic didn't really work out too good, although I did accidentally discover that you can just become a L2 spamming unkillable god for this if you use that Aromatic. Kind of like bringing back the old patch of just like weapon art looping them. Now, for all you hitless challenge runners out there that are doing no Ashes of War, no Auxiliary, all that jazz, because I'm assuming no one is doing a no Serpent Hunter hitless base level unupgraded run because how would you even do that has someone actually done this boss fight with those restrictions without ever going into the lava like only baiting his attacks where he overextends out of the lava in both phases has anyone actually done that that would be mental i don't even think i would be impressed i think i would just be genuinely concerned if i saw that but now anyways let's get into the core dodges the roll and the jump there is no low profiling or strafing this so I messed around with this attack for quite a while and I discovered a couple things. Now originally I thought the best way to dodge this was to do a sprinting jump since that is the quickest way to get the most amount of distance almost instantly in this game and is useful for a ton of different dodges. Doing the sprinting jump has replaced a lot of my dodges for many other boss fights actually. But still it still feels a bit inconsistent or about as consistent as trying to roll out of the shockwave. The difference being you have to let go of run to then hit roll again, which makes it a little bit awkward. Basically, the farther you are away from it, the better chance you have of escaping the cone because the tracking will stop after the shockwave starts. More distance equals more time to get out of the cone. It is possible to dodge this in this way when you're closer to him, but it's more of a cross your fingers type situation as I have not been able to do it consistently. I also found more luck dodging to the left. I have dodged it to the right many times. I've just found more success and more consistency going to the left. I don't know why. The other thing too that you're gonna have to watch out for is all the shit in his arena so carefully you don't jump into a pillar or something. If I do get hung up on a pillar I try and just like panic and climb up it to do the jump off the corpse pile over top of the lava quake. I also tried testing it to see if you could break his tracking like when he starts it up running all the way to the left and then turning back to run right in case it leads you like the gargoyle's sword shockwave attack leads you to the right but doesn't track you to the left but as far as I can tell this attack does not work that way you cannot break his tracking at any point until after the shockwave actually comes out and by then it's kind of too late but the big thing is once I realized that he does not do this attack at close range it kind of just all went downhill from there for developing the strategy. Basically, there is no reason you should not be right underneath them. You should just fight Rikard in phase one very up close. In this way, you can burn through his phase one pretty quickly and never see this attack. The only time that you should get pushed away from him is when he does the venom spit. At that point, you will have to back away from him and then you will then be at risk of getting targeted by a lava quake once you're at medium range of him. The other reason is that once you actually start the fight, he can open with this attack. So you have to be able to dodge it at least once. At least at the start of the fight, you can jump up the corpse pile, and if he opens with it, you can just easily jump over it and then continue the fight from there. 
But anyways, if you get pushed away from a toxic spit, run away really far away because he very often follows up with the lava quake with this. If you get far enough away, you just start sprinting to the left and jump out of the way. It's very consistent once you know the spacing well. Now he can technically do the lava quake back to back and I have seen him do this exactly once. But for the most part, what you are going to do is fight him at short range only disengage if he does the toxic spit. If he does the lava slap, you can easily re-engage him at close range before he leaves his recovery for that attack. So if he toxic spits you, run away very far, be prepared for the lava quake, and then slowly walk back into his range, you will learn the timing for the aggro range of the lava quake. This is just like fighting Melania or something. You just kind of learn that aggro ring around there, the invisible one, where once you cross it, the boss will either aggro you or not. If you trigger the lava quake, do the dodge at that aggro range. If not, if it does another attack, you can safely get back in and reapproach Rykard. This loop I have found to be very consistent. So good luck with it in your challenge runs. If you care about dodging it hitless that way, or otherwise feel free to use all the plethora of other stuff in the game like Vow of the Indomitable or Raptor of the Mists, or just like block it with the weapon in your hand. It's no big deal. You will take hits in a Souls game. That is just something that happens. But again, this is far from comprehensive. This is just me meddling around for like an hour and a half trying to see what I could come up with. So if you found any other ways to dodge this or a very consistent strategy or even a not so consistent strategy, please just post it on YouTube and I would be more than happy to add that link into the description of this video. Like I said, even if you just randomly dodge it and you don't know why and can't reproduce it, it would be helpful to see that. So maybe we can find out more ways to dodge this attack. So yeah, hit me up in the comments if you have any other ways to dodge this attack that I haven't showed here. Take care. Have a wonderful day. All that good stuff. I'm really happy that I found a consistent way to dodge this because in my opinion, this again was the worst attack in the game to consistently dodge. It really feels like with some shockwave attacks, they maybe intended you to dodge them with the torrent double jump and then just never had them in a lot of boss fights. But anyways, now that I found these couple of ways to dodge it, I'm happy with that. So who cares? Also, let me know if there's any other attacks you want me to make a video like this for. There's not too many I could think of. Maybe like God Skin Bellywog, Water foul dance just like those token attacks but eh we'll see anyways hit the trail you freaks